Hi everyone, welcome to today's Liberty Kids service. Before we go into praise and worship, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this opportunity to be at the Liberty Kids Church in Jesus' name. God, please help us to use our learning every day in Jesus' name. Amen. Now it's time for praise and worship. Listen, anything good that a loved one has done for you, God has been that and then some. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we've come to declare it today. He's been too good, yes. You've done everything for me. You've done everything for me. You've done everything for me. Hey. You've done everything for Say me. you've done. You've done everything for Say me. Say it like you mean it. You've done everything for me.
Hello, Liberty Kids Global. Welcome to today's Bible teaching. Oh, I'm so glad to have you here with me today. How are you? How has your week been? I hope you've had an amazing week so far and I can't wait to hear all about it. Today on Becoming a Disciple of Christ, Bible Camp Teaching, we'll be discussing week three, Master Your Emotions. Yeah, Master Your Emotions. You can get a copy of this booklet, Becoming a Disciple of Christ, down below. There's a link attached on this YouTube channel that can enable you get a copy of the booklet. You can ask your mom or your dad or an adult with you to help you get this booklet, which can be downloaded just below this YouTube channel. Okay, so let's go on with the lesson. Can you remember what we talked about in week one? Yes, who am I? And can we remember week two? Follow the leader. That's correct, follow the leader. For week three, we're going to be discussing master your emotions. Do you have your Bible? Do you have your Bible? If you don't, please get your Bible, get a pen and a paper because we're going to be doing a lot of learning. OK, we're going to be doing a lot of learning. So um, I'd ask you to please get your pen and get your paper. OK, so open your Bibles to John 8 verse 31 yeah john 8 verse 31 and let's read jesus said to the jews who believed in him you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teaching then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free let us read that again john 8 31 jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, you are truly my disciples. If you remain faithful to my teaching, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Fantastic. I'm going to be asking you a couple of questions, okay? And the first question is, have you ever thought about why you feel the way you feel? So sometimes you feel a certain way. Have you ever thought about why you feel that way? And why you think that way? <laughs> so sometimes you have a thought and you're thinking, why am I thinking that way? The next question is, what is the mind and how does it work? Have you ever thought about that? The next question is, is it in the brain or outside of the brain? So what I'm thinking, is it in the brain or outside of the brain? What influences it? What influences the way we think or the way we feel? Can we control the way we think or the way we feel? So I just want you to think about that. Take a couple of seconds to think about those questions that I've just asked you. What influences the way you think or the way you feel? Can you control it, the way you think and the way you feel? Okay, now I have this exercise for you, okay? Get your paper and get a pen because we're going to write, okay? So when you hear these words that I'm going to read out, I want you to think about each expression and their meaning. So the first one is make up your mind. When you hear that, what expression are you thinking? And what do you think that means when you hear make up your mind? The second one is I change my mind. So when you hear I change my mind, what does that mean to you? What expression does that mean? How about my mind is blank? My mind went blank. When you hear someone say, my mind went blank, I don't know if this happened to you, 
But if it's happened to you, what expression is that? And what does that mean to you? The last one is mind the gap. When you hear mind the gap, what does that mean to you? What expression is that? So I need you to think about that, but I'm going to share my thoughts, okay? When I hear make up your mind, I'll give an example. So I have an apple and I have some grapes and I just have to pick one. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, I need to make up my mind. Do I want an apple or do I want some grapes? Then I make up my mind and I think of, I want an apple. Then I can go again, okay, I changed my mind. So you remember I picked an apple, but now what am I doing? I'm thinking, you know what? I want grapes. So can you see what's happening to my mind and my expressions? Because now I change my mind. Then I make up my mind. So you're having different expressions. You're having different choices. You know, your mind is thinking of different ways to respond to an apple or some grapes. How about, for me, my mind went blank. So I have an option to pick an apple or some grapes, but I don't even know. My mind just went blank. I don't know what I want, right? Then when I hear personally mind a gap, I'm careful because I'm thinking to myself, okay, I need to be careful there's a gap here that maybe could trip me over so I need to mind the gap so how was that for you did that get you thinking okay great I hope it got you thinking and I hope you got you thinking why your mind keeps going like on and off and you're thinking okay I need to just decide on something well done well done for that exercise so we're going to go into the next one. So according to Kiddle, the kids encyclopedia, the mind is a general term for the way a person thinks, reasons, perceives, wills, and feels. Do you want me to say that again? So the mind is a general term for the way a person thinks, reasons, perceives, wills and feels. For science, what other call the mind is entirely caused by walkings of the brain, okay? So I have a question for you. You see, we're gonna have loads of writing today, but it just gets your mind thinking. What are the things that can influence the mind? Do you know? Okay. What do you think? I'll tell you what I think. So the things that can influence my mind could be television, what I watch on television, or what I see on in the environment. Yeah, so I can decide that I want it maybe color red and everyone's having a blue. And I think, you know what, I'm just gonna have a blue because everyone's having a blue. So your environment can actually influence your mind. Even people around you, people can influence your mind. So let's say you wanted ice cream, but everyone around you is eating cake. You're thinking, you know what, I'll just try some cake. So there's so many things around us that can influence our mind. How about you? Do you have any? It would be great to put some down. Just write some on your piece of paper. So what you watch on TV what you see on your phone and a tablet, what you listen to, the music you listen to, what you talk about with your friends or your family or anyone. At school, what you talk about in school, what you talk about at home, what you listen to, all those things can either influence your mind positively or negatively. So whatever you're, whoever you're speaking to, Whatever you're talking about can either influence you positively or negatively. This is what we call the natural mind. The mind formed and shaped. The mind is formed 
and shaped by our environment. So everything happening around us is formed and shaped. You know, our mind is formed and shaped by our environment. If the mind were muscle, it would be like a brain. Whatever you feed it or train it to do, it will act accordingly. So whatever you train your mind, whatever you feed your mind, it will train your mind to do it. So if you feed your mind with positive things, positive words, the word of God, good friends, good things, what would happen to your mind? Yeah, that's what will come out because whatever you feed it is what will come out of your mind. But also, there are things that we can do consciously and things that are observed by our mind unconsciously. So there's some things that you don't even know is happening to your mind because you're not observant about it or you don't even know is happening around you. So you see, the mind is very powerful. How we protect our mind with what we listen to, what we watch, what we hear, what we say is very important because the mind is very, very powerful. Do you remember in session one, we talked about our identity. Although our identity is in Christ, there is a duality within us between what we think is good and what God said is good. What the world says we are and who God says we are. And also talked about the story of Gideon. This duality is the same in our mind, between our natural mind and what God wants, which is the mind of Christ. So God wants the mind of Christ. Do you have your Bible? So let me get my Bible and let's open to Romans 7, 18 to 20. Yeah, Romans 7. Eighteen to twenty. So let's read. Okay. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I carry not, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever been in a situation where you did something you knew was wrong because it felt right at the time. What did you do? And how did it make you feel afterward? Yeah, I'm sure you didn't feel so right, isn't it? And you learned from it and decided, you know what? I'm not going to do this because you knew it was wrong. Okay? And we learned from it not to do it again. So... Certain things can feel right, but they are not. This is the reason why it's important to know God's point of view. Have you been in a situation where you know you will be in trouble with your parents if you did something or said something you should not have, despite your parents never really talked about it with you? What was it? So... I'll repeat that question. You're in a situation where you know you will be in trouble with your parents if you did or said something you should not have. Despite the fact that your parents never really talked about it with you. What was it? And whatever it was, 
how did you know you would be in trouble? <laughs> so how did you know? So your parents never talked to you about it. So despite the fact your parents have not spoken to you about it before, but you know, if I did this, I'll be in trouble. So you see, because your parents, because you know your parents and you spend a lot of time with them, you know what they like and you know what they don't like. By the way, they raised you. You can know their expectations. So the way your parents raised you, you know, oh, mom and dad wouldn't like this. Because of the way you've always spent time with them, you know what they like and you know what they don't like. It's the same way with God spending time with him and the resources that he gave us. When we become familiar with spending time with God, knowing God and getting to know him, we would know what pleases him and what does not please him. When we read the word of God, it would tell us all about God. It would tell us what he likes and what he doesn't like. Okay. So I needed to mention things you can do to get to spend time with God and get to know him. Anything? Yeah, read your Bible, pray, worship, do your devotion. When you spend time with God, when you read the word of God, you get to know who God is, okay? And we don't know, there is a constant battle between doing what feels right and doing what is, um, doing what feels right and doing what feels, um, and doing what is right. So there is that battle where you know this is right, but doing it can be a little bit difficult, isn't it? That's why it is important we constantly remember what God wants us to do and what God says in the word of God. If you're not sure how to act when you face a particular situation, you can ask your parents and look together for answers in the Bible because everything you need is in the word of God. So remember I did say, that you might be thinking that you're in a situation where maybe it's not mentioned in the Bible. Speak to your parents because you might not know where it is, but speak to them. And as you study the word of God, you begin to know everything that God wants us to do in the word of God. As you have a relationship with God, you know, he begins to speak to you, give you instructions of what to do and what not to do. So speak to your parents as well and they'll be able to help you identify what you want to find out about a situation with the word of God. So we're going to read Romans 1, 28 to 31. Okay, if you have your Bible, open to Romans 1. to 31. People did not think it was important to have a true knowledge of God. So God left them and allowed them to have their own worthless thinking. And so those people do the things that they should not do. They are filled with every kind of sin, evil, selfishness and hatred. They are full of jealousy, murder, fighting, lying and thinking the worst about each other. They gossip and say evil things about each other. They hate God. They are rude and conceited and brag about themselves. They invent ways of doing evil. They do not obey their parents. They are foolish. They do not keep their promises. And they show no kindness or mercy to other people. So you see, these people do not have a true knowledge of God. So what we need to do in order to always have the true knowledge of God is by spending time with God, by studying the Bible, doing our 
morning prayers, listening to praise and worship and letting God speak to us and so that we can have a personal relationship with God and he can tell us what he wants us to do. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question, right? And I'm sure you know the answer. Now, where can you learn about Jesus' teaching? In the Bible. Yes, of course, in the Bible. And also coming to Sunday school, Sunday teaching. Like you're also listening online, you're also learning. And now we're learning about God. We're learning about what God wants us to do and what he wants us to think about and how he wants us to feel. So yes, we can learn about Jesus teaching from the Bible and listening like you are now today and coming to a Bible school on Sunday, Sunday school as well. Now, another question is, how can you remain faithful to Jesus' teaching? How can you? We can remain faithful to Jesus' teaching by studying the word of God. It's all in the word of God. Remember the scripture I read in Romans 1, 28 to 31. They didn't have the true knowledge of God and that was why they did the things they did. You know, they did every kind of sin, evil, selfishness. They hated one another. They were lying, they were fighting and they were thinking of the worst with one another. They were gossiping about one another. So for us to remain faithful, to Jesus is by reading the word of God, spending time in the word of God, praying, worshiping, so that we understand what God wants for us. Okay, I'm going to read this to you and I need you to listen because I'm going to ask you a question. Aya was at church when they heard an adult say that he had a close relationship with God because every day he wakes up very early at 5 a.m. to have a quiet time with God. Have you heard about quiet time before? Have you? Can you describe in your words what it means? So what is quiet time to you? I can tell you what quiet time to me is. So Quiet time to me is when I spend time with God, is when I read my Bible, is when I journal, I write a bit, I write things down based on what I studied or what I believe I'm hearing from the word of God. And I write that down. For me, quiet time is a time that I just think and I reflect on all the things that God has done. It's a time that I can pray, it's a time that I can worship. So... What is quiet time for you? Okay, let's continue reading about Ayo. Now, Ayo really wants to have a close relationship with God by waking up early to pray to God. So you know what Ayo did? He tried once, but could not do it. The next day, he tried again, but he was so tired that he did not wake up. Aya was disappointed because he could not wake up very early to pray for an hour. Like the man from church said, you remember the man from church said, he wakes up early at 5 a.m. to have his quiet time with God, remember? So because of that, Aya was very disappointed. The next Sunday, Aya decided to ask Miss Emily, the Sunday school teacher, why he could not wake up early in the morning to pray for an hour as some adults do. Miss Emily told Aya not to worry that when he wakes up to get ready for school, he can spend five minutes or more doing his quiet time by praying and or reading scriptures from his Bible. Remember that quiet time is more than a habit. It's an appointment 
and a relationship with God. Okay? I want you to remember that. So, what do you do for your quiet time? Or what can you start doing for your quiet time? Do you want to pray? Do you want to read the Bible? Do you want to read your scriptures? So, I want you to write down on a piece of paper what you will start doing or what you're already doing and you want to continue doing. The way to have Christ living in you is to have his word in you. So for us to have Christ live in us, we have to have his word in us. Now, we're on to the next section and I'm going to be talking about activating the mind of Christ. Okay? And I want you to write the scriptures down, okay? So the first scripture is Hebrews 4 verse 15. So at your time, I want you to read it, okay? So what we're doing is with Hebrews 4 15, we're remembering that Christ was tempted in every way you are tempted. And yet, what happened? He overcame the temptation. Okay, and you can read that in Hebrews 4 verse 15. He overcame the temptation. Okay. Now, for us to activate the mind of Christ, we need to pray for grace in time of need. Okay, and we can read that more about that in Hebrews 4 16. Okay. Then we have express humility by getting on our knees, okay? So in order for us to activate the mind of Christ, we need to get on our knees and pray. We need to what? Get on our knees and pray. So that is one way we can activate the mind of Christ. The next is adopt God's attitude and choose his response, okay? So as you spend time with God, He'll speak to you. He'll instruct you. And we need to choose his response. Okay. So when he speaks to us and instructs us, we need to do his, his will and his response. Okay. Also, you can ask the Holy Spirit for help to find a way to deal with temptation. So every time we feel like doing the wrong thing, we can ask the Holy Spirit for help. And that with and with the Holy Spirit, we will get the help we need to deal with temptation. And we can read more on that in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Also, we can ask God to help us through any past temptations. You know, God would help us. He would walk with us through any past temptation. Did you know that we could also look for scriptures? We can look for scriptures in the Bible and we can use those scriptures to claim and help us to overcome temptation. We can ask God to help us focus on his will. Okay, you can read more on that in Philippians 2 to 13. Ask him to help us focus on his will. Then we must acknowledge and ask for forgiveness for thinking about temptation. So every time we think of doing something wrong, we can ask God, help me, Lord. Forgive me and acknowledge that what I'm thinking to do or what I'm about to do is wrong and ask him to help you, ask him to forgive you. Okay? And we can read more on that in 1 John 1 verse 9. It's also important that in order for us to activate the mind of Christ, we need to obey God's commandments, knowing that we're in a spiritual warfare. So by obeying God's commandment, we're doing what is right, okay? Remember we did say, sometimes you know what is right, but you might be thinking, oh, okay, no, one's a, no one has told me, it's not right or it's not wrong. But you know within yourself that mm, I shouldn't be doing this, okay? And that's because you know deep inside of you the difference between what is right and the difference between what is wrong. So we need to obey 
God's commandment so that we can do what is right. And we can read more on that in Romans 8, 26 to 27. I'm going to ask you a question now. Are you willing to commit to make God's words a part of your life? So daily, are you willing to commit? Are you? You're going to commit to make God's word a part of your life. Yes, I'm sure you did say yes. And if it says yes, I need you to write down what specific goals are you going to set for yourself? What goals? So do you want to do your devotion all your quiet time before school in the morning? Do you want to do one before you go to bed? You need to set goals because if you don't set goals, you might not even know when or how to do it. So set goals. You can speak to your mom or your dad and ask them to help you, you know, work together and set those goals. Did you know that being able to re recall Bible verses as you need them is important in every Christian's daily work? Hmm? Did you know? Because you can say, I can do all things just Christ who strengthens me. In a time when you feel like, okay, I don't know if I can do this. But you remember, because you had the word of God in you, you remember that I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Or sometimes you'll be like, you know what? I am courageous. The Bible says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You remember, because the word of God is in you. You can say, I will be blessed when I go in, when I come in and blessed when I go out. That's because the word of God is in you. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Because the word of God is what? In you. So it's important that we have the word of God in us so that the word of God can come out of us. And for every time we're going through temptation, you know that God is with you. And you can speak to God and say, God, this is what I really want to do. This is what I need you to help me with. And God is always there in the time of need. Okay? So I need you to describe a time when a scripture you memorized was helpful to you. I gave you some examples. For me, if I want to be courageous, I remember, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For your Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. So, I need you to tell me, what scripture did you memorize that helped you in the time of need? Okay. Now, in your booklet, we have some scriptures that we're going to read together, okay? So we're going to read the scripture verses below, okay? And match the reference with the prayer promises from the Bible. Now let's do this together. We have Colossians 3 verse 2. Think only about the things in heaven, not the things on earth. Colossians 3 verse 2. Okay? So if we're going to match it with the one below, we're going to look at it. First Colossians 3 verse 2, it says, give attention to the things of the spirit. That's a good one. Okay, let's go to, let's read it all, then we can match together. Romans 8, 5 to 6. Those who leave following their sinful selves think only about things that their sinful selves want. But those who leave following the Spirit are thinking about the things that the Spirit wants to them to do. If a person's thinking is controlled by his sinful self, then there is death. But if his thinking is controlled by the Spirit, then there is life and peace. Okay? We're going to do Psalms 1 verse 2. He loves the Lord's teaching. He thinks about those teaching day and night. Okay. Then we go for 
John 16 verse 13. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will lead you to all truth. He will not speak his own words. He will speak the only words he hears and tell you what is to come. So that's John 16, 13. So you know what? Let's go down and match this Bible verses. So what do you think? A, give attention to the things of the spirit. What do you think um, we should match this against? Well, I think we should match this against Romans 8, 5 to 6. Because it tells us to give attention to the things of the Spirit. And when we read here, it tells us that those who live following their sinful selves think only about things that their sinful selves want. So what we need to do is instead of doing that, we need to leave following the Spirit. Because it says, but those who leave following the Spirit are thinking about things that the Spirit wants to do. So we need to give attention to the things of the Spirit. Because the things of the Spirit is what would enable us to have life and peace. If we're thinking of things of the Spirit. Amazing. Well done. B says, let the Holy Spirit guide you into, into the truth. Now, which do you think it is we should match this to? I'll match that to John 16, verse 13. I'll match that to that. Okay, let's see. And that's because the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. Remember the scripture talked about when the spirit of truth comes, he would lead you into all truth so it means whenever we need the holy spirit he will guide us into what is right for us to do the third one talks about set your heart desires on heavenly things and that's colossians 3 verse 2 and the reason is because if we read it remember colossians 3 2 focuses on us thinking about the things in heaven not the things on earth so we need to set our heart desires on heavenly things the last one which is d meditate on god's word now we're going to match that to psalm 1 verse 2. why because it's talking about us loving he loves the teachings. He thinks about those day and night. So what, when you think about the word of God day and night, it's telling us that we need to meditate on the word of God day and night. Okay. So how did that go for you? Was that a good match? Amazing. I'm sure you did amazing with that. And you can always go back and do it again and read it again and do it again until you understand it um, fully. Okay. So I'm going to repeat myself, which I did, because I think it's important that being able to recall verses as you need them is important in a Christian daily walk. OK, so I want you to think about that and go back and get a lot of scriptures from the Bible. Write maybe 10, 12, memorize those scriptures, because you know what? You're going to need them. You're going to need them for your daily work when you need those scriptures, because it's in you, it will come out of you. Well done. So, I need you to ask them, anyone around you, if they have tried memorizing Bible scriptures before, Bible verses before. Did they find it easy or difficult? And what style do they use to memorize Bible verses? You can ask your mom and your dad, or your siblings or your friends, what style do they use to memorize Bible verses? What I do, I can share what I do. So for me to memorize Bible verses, I write them down on a note and I read them and I read them over and over again. And then I write it on another piece of paper or another book to ask myself, can I remember what I just read? So the first step is I pick the scripture I want to memorize 
Okay, for example, I want to memorize, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I write that down in a notebook, then I read it, then I close the notebook and I read it again to see if I remember. Then I go to another piece of paper or a notebook and I write it again. Also, if you have a post-it, a post-it paper, you can write the scripture on the post-it paper. When you've done that, you can post it in your bedroom, on your mirror. You can post it anywhere you, th you know you're going to be going often. Okay? Because when you go to your mirror to look at yourself, what will happen? The scripture will be looking back at you and you can read it. Or if you have a journal, if you have a book, whatever you have that you know you're going to open regularly, write it in there and read it in and read it regularly. The more you read, the more you would assimilate it. The more you read, the more you would memorize it and it becomes easy. And whenever you need it, because it's in you, it will come out of you. So I'm going to read Matthew 4 verse 18 to 22. It is written that John... So in Matthew 4, verse 18 to 22, it is written that John and James were fishermen. They were fishing in a lake with a nest when Jesus called them and told them to come and follow him. As they heard Jesus call, they dropped their nets and followed him. You can read that in Matthew 4, verse 18 to 22. You can read all about that in there. In your opinion, why do they drop their nets and follow him? Do you know? Why? Okay. They obeyed God's command and followed Jesus because they recognized him as their master. To abide in Christ means we have to obey God. We have to obey him. Okay. The way to obey God. Christ is by knowing what the Bible says. Of course, you do not have to remember all the Bible, but through different stories in the Bible and having a dedicated quiet time with God, you can learn more about him and know what is pleasing to God. Okay. Well, we all know and love the story of David and Goliath, right? What do you think we can learn from this story? I want you to write down, what do you think you can learn from the story of David and Goliath? I'll tell you one, being courageous. David was courageous. He knew that God was with him. And so when he was with, he met with Goliath, he knew that I have been with God. God is always by my side. So I'm going to be brave. I'm going to be strong. So knowing that God is with you, you know that you can do what you need to do. But for you, write down, what do you love about that story? What have you learned from David? David was dedicated. You know, when he was taking care of his father's flocks, he was dedicated. If any sheep was missing, he will go after that sheep. You know, he made sure that he worked really hard and he was practicing every single day by preparing himself and taking care of the, his father's flock. And if anyone comes near it, he will go after a lion and take down that lion to save the sheep. So what did you like about the story of David and Goliath? Tell me. We can learn that when God has a plan and a purpose for us, there is nothing too big that can prevent us from achieving it. So Goliath wasn't too big for David. He took Goliath down. So whatever is a Goliath around you, maybe you're trying to be, get better at maths or get better as a sport. Trust God. Ask God to help you. Pray about it. Walk towards it. And you would achieve it with God's grace and his help. When God is with us, no matter the circumstances, we will be victorious. Do you remember what your primary task as a disciple from last week is? Do you? Okay. So, 
your secondary task is to leave in the word. If you do this, you will bear fruits. Below is the element of the disciple cross, okay? You know what I want you to do? I want you to write write word. So write in that where you have the arrow, if you check in your booklet, where you have the arrow pointing at the bubble, I need you to write word in the arrow and I need you to write John 8 verse 31 to 32, okay? So I need you to write that down in that bubble, okay? And if you see what it says there, it says, this week I will follow Jesus, okay? And I need you to color in the foot day by day as you follow Jesus. So on Monday, on that foot, can you see the foot? right? What I want you to do, when you do your time with God, your quiet time with God, I want you to color that up to say, you know what? Monday, I spend time with God. Tuesday, I spend time with God. Wednesday, I spend time with God. Color that in or tick that in, but make sure you register that this week I have been a disciple and I have followed the Lord. So, lastly, what I want you to do, okay, is I'm going to do an activity, okay? And if you look into your booklet, it says fill in the blanks, okay? So, we're filling in the missing letters, the name of Jesus' 12 disciples. If you need help, turn to Luke 6, verse 13 to 16, okay? So, do you know what the first one is? Yes, Simon Peter, well done. The next one is, what do you think is missing? Andrew, well done. The third one is, James, that's correct. The fourth one is, John, nice. The fifth one is, Philip, fantastic. The sixth one is, Bartholomew, well done. The second one is Matthew, fantastic. The eighth one is Thomas. The ninth one is James, well done. The son of Alphaeus. And the tenth one is Simon called the Zealot. The eleventh one is Judas, son of James. And the last one is Judas Iscariot. Well done. Fantastic. I hope you've put that together. Take your time. Okay? You can always revisit it and write that in. Or take your time and do that now, okay? So, there's another page that talks about us journaling. And what I want you to do is I need you to journal what happens during the week, okay? Remember that we talked about following Jesus. And how can we do that? We can follow Jesus by reading the Word of God, memorizing the Word of God, because the Word of God is what would help us in the way we think, the way we react, and the way we feel. So when you have the word of God, what happens? It comes out of you. Remember, there is a scripture. Let's say, for example, today is like mm, a bit cold, or you're just thinking, you know what? I don't want to go to school today. I don't know. Remember what scripture you can use. You can use, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Because the word of God is in you, it comes out of you. So I want you to journal what happens this week. What scriptures did you learn this week? Tell me. So we have a section in there where you can journal what happens this week.
Hope you've enjoyed today's Bible teaching, today's Bible camp teaching, Liberty Kids Global. I hope you've enjoyed this, okay? And I want you to have an amazing week, okay? So before we close, what do you think we need to do? We need to pray. So let's close our eyes and let's pray. Father Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for everything that we've learned today. We've learned about the word of God. We've learned about how important it is to have the word of God in us. Father Lord, help us have your word so that we can do what is right. Help us to read the word of God, to memorize the word of God so that the word of God can be in us and let us know that we can always count and call on the Holy Spirit to help us when we need to make decisions. Father Lord, as we go out this week, we pray we have an amazing week. We pray you guide us, you protect us, you teach us. We ask for protection and guidance over our parents and our loved ones. We pray that even as we continue Bible camp, we'll continue to grow as disciples of Jesus. We'll continue to grow in the word of God. We'll continue to spend our quiet time learning the word of God and become strong and courageous with the word of God. Father, we are grateful for everything that you're doing and everything you will be doing in our lives. For in Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you and have an amazing week. Bye-bye.
Thank you. Hello children, my name is Miss Laura and I'm here to welcome our first timers. We're so, so excited to have you today join our service. So Liberty Kids is a children's ministry of the Liberty Church London. It's for young children between the ages of 1 to 12. Although we're based in London, Liberty Church and Liberty Kids is a global church and a global ministry. We have members in Europe, in America, in Canada, in Africa, and in the Middle East. And we're so excited that you've taken part in the service today. We hope you've been blessed. We hope you've enjoyed it. Please tell your parents to please follow Liberty Kids on Instagram, and on Facebook, we always have lots of exciting events. So make sure to remind your parents, look out for the flyers so that you can take part in all the wonderful activities that we have planned for you. So I'll just say a prayer now and ask God to bless you. So please close your eyes with me. Thank you. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the first time as we took part in our service today. Please protect them and their families. Thank you for their friends and families who told them about the Liberty Church. Please keep them safe. Keep all of us safe. And we hope that we'll all be able to come together for the next week's service. Stay blessed. Welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's service. Before we go, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the learning of Liberty Kids service. In Jesus name, God, please help us to use that learning every day in our lives. In Jesus name, God, throughout the week, help us use that learning until next Sunday. In Jesus name, amen. Bye everyone. See you next week. Stay liberated.